What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can patch holes in objects in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a lot of different ways to do this and we're gonna kind of move through them from start to finish and from simplest to most complex. So if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. But the easiest way to patch holes in SketchUp is obviously going to be if you have a hole like this one to just draw over the end. And when you do that, what SketchUp is gonna do is it's gonna heal a face in just like this. So if you've got something that's missing an edge, you can just draw a new edge. Now, if you have something that's on a surface like this one that isn't really missing an edge, there's a couple different options. So the first is you could just erase out the edge. And when you erase out the edge on a flat surface, that's just gonna heal in the face around the outside and you're not gonna have this issue anymore. If you wanna keep that box, you would just redraw over one of the edges right here like this. That also works for things like circles where you can just redraw on one of the edges and it'll heal the face in. One thing it's worth noting is when it, you are on a face like this one, if you do want to get rid of something like this, you can also just drag a box across the object and then hit the delete key and this will also heal the surface like this. Now, next up, this gets a lot more complicated when we start dealing with three-dimensional surfaces like this one because you've got multiple different faces to deal with. And so when you're dealing with holes like these, if you want to get rid of them, there's a few different things you could do. You could draw an edge over both sides like this. That'll heal in the faces on both sides. Then if you wanted to, you could erase out that geometry in order to leave a simple face, or you could leave this right here in case you needed to cut that hole later. So you could do something similar over here. So there's also the possibility for this one, if you wanted to patch the hole, you could just push pull this down to the bottom like this so that you no longer have a hole in your model. Now you can also heal in a face and then push pull that face. So. If I was to take this face right here and push pull it, notice how right now when I do this, what it's doing is it's just doing the same thing where you move it to the back and then you've got a face on the back. But if you activate the push pull tool, single click and tap the control key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in create new face mode, which is gonna create a new face that aligns with the surface right here. So then you have two surfaces like this. Now, the easiest way to do this, especially if you have multiple holes like this one, is just the same thing that we did over on the flat object. You can just select all of this geometry, being careful that you're not selecting anything behind your object. It's especially important when you're dealing with houses and things like that. But if you select all of this geometry like this, what's gonna happen is you can just hit the delete key and that'll be gone. And then you no longer have these holes in your model. This gets even more complicated when you start dealing with holes in curved surfaces, right? Because there's a lot more that you're dealing with in here. But one of the things that's really important is that you understand that you can go to view hidden geometry and see the geometry that's in your model. That's massively important because basically the way this whole thing is set up right here is that you have a hole that's cut through and this is basically two different faces right? They have softened edges between them. And so there's a few different ways that we could go about this. So the easiest would be just push pulling this face in here like this down to the bottom. One thing it's worth noting is this only works with the hidden geometry on because you're basically editing the hidden geometry in here when you push pull it. Now, a lot of the time what you can do is you can figure out kind of where the geometry is going, right? Because naturally with the way that this face is set up, you've got a segment and a segment. Well, since that's the case, you know that this is going to be basically a straight line edge from here to here. Well, notice how if I draw the straight line edge in here like this, it's going to fill in that surface. And you can do the same thing on the backside. So you can draw a line down like this all the way to the bottom. And then you could draw your line here and you could draw your line here like this. So we've manually filled this in, and then you could take these edges and you could soften them. So notice how I'm doing a shift click right here and I can soften these edges. Well, now if I turn my hidden geometry off, notice how this is a nice smooth 
surface. Now, one thing you might want to do is you might also want to take those edges and also smooth them so that this is a smooth surface. So you can select them and do a smooth right here. And then now if you toggle your hidden geometry off, you've patched this opening like this. Now, another way that you can do this if you're doing with complex shapes is a lot of the time the geometry that makes up an object. So I've got this sphere right here is repetitive. And so if we were to go to view hidden geometry, notice how this sphere has the same repetitive geometry over and over again. And so instead of us coming in here and just drawing across like this in order to heal this face, which you can do, but then you're left with these edges that you have to soften and it's additional work. What you can do instead is, and I'm going to undo this, you can pick up some of the neighboring geometry like this. And then you can just tap the Q key and we're just going to use the rotate tool. And um, usually what I'll do is I'll tap Q and then I'll tap the up arrow and I'll move it over the surface right here and single click. Tapping the up arrow locks this to a, um, a plane on the blue axis. But then I could use the rotate tool in copy mode in order to rotate this over like this. So now if we toggle off our hidden geometry, notice that we've healed all of this geometry back in and all we have to do is use the eraser tool and hold the shift key in order to soften that one edge so we could do the same thing over here so we would just pick up this geometry like this tap the q key tap the up arrow key and then single click single click and remember to tap the control key to go into copy mode but now what that's done is that's healed that geometry in here just like this. So you have a nice smooth shape again. And so sometimes when you're working with surfaces and you cut your hole, there's a smarter way to go about this. And so like, for example, I've got this surface which curves on multiple different directions, right? Well, one of the options that you have for cutting a hole is push pulling this through like this and then um, selecting this face, doing a right click and intersecting the geometry, so intersecting faces with model. But the problem with that is it's destructive. Well, if you can, what you might do instead is if you can get this wall to be a solid group, and then I can take this object and make it a group. Notice how these are both solids. Well, what you can do is you can use the solid tools function like this. And a lot of people use this in subtract mode, right? They want to subtract this object from this object and cut the hole. That's a valid way of doing this. But the problem with doing this is now I don't have that geometry and it's really hard to get it back. But if I was to instead use the split function right here, so I'm going to do a split. I'm going to click on this object. I'm going to click on this object. Well, notice how now what that did is that takes this object and this object and it splits them, but it also maintains this geometry right here, right? And this is all solid because we're using solid tools. So if you do something like this, if you keep this piece of geometry, you know, in case you need to move it around or something like that. So if I move this back down into this hole, I can use solid tools and I can join or you do an outer shell on these objects and that's going to bring this in and it's going to reintegrate that geometry into this object right here. So if you do have complex objects like this, maybe consider using the split function and keeping that geometry in case you need to move that hole later. Okay, so next up, we've got a couple different options in here for patching holes using extensions. And so the first extension that I use for this all the time is called Soapskin and Bubble. And Soapskin and Bubble is an extension you can download for free from the SketchUp extension warehouse. You can just search for Soapskin right here and you can download and install this extension. But basically what this does is this allows you to select a series of edges for patching in things. I use this all the time time when I'm working with landscapes, which I talk, talk about a bunch in the landscape essentials portion of my course. But um, this is a very, very important tool when you are working with landscapes. So that's one way to go about this. However, sometimes when you have holes, and we're going to go back to our example we had before, sometimes when you have holes for whatever reason, it doesn't like the geometry that's in here if you use soap, skin, and bubble. So what it'll do I need to make sure I pick up all of the edges. Actually, one great tool is contained inside a profile builder. It's called the Smart Path Select tool. And what that'll do is that'll let you select geometry 
along a path like this. So it's much faster. I can hit the enter key and then I can um, activate this. But if I run this with soap, skin and bubble, notice how it lines this kind of weird, right? It like rotates this. So even if I add this in here, it gives me kind of weird geometry. I mean, the geometry works, but if I look at my hidden geometry on my other object, it just doesn't align very well. This geometry doesn't really have anything to do with this geometry, but it's a valid patch if you do want to use it to create a patch on that opening. But another tool that I'll use for this is called Curveloft. It's an extension from Fredo 6. It's a part of his uh it's a part of his Fredo 6 bundle and uh this is one of those bundles of tools that I recommend most SketchUp users get. But if I activate Curveloft, there's a tool in here called Skin Contours. And what Skin Contours is going to do is that's actually going to come in here and it's going to create a skin on the surface. And notice while it doesn't do the diagonals, right? It's not continuing the diagonals in here. The geometry that it's creating in here is a lot more, I don't know, it makes a lot more sense. It's not rotated sideways. Um, and usually I'll toggle off the sampling and the interpolation because those just add additional geometry. But if I hit the inner key in here, what that's going to do is that's going to create geometry like this um, in your surface right here. So it's just a little bit better than the like odd kind of rotated grid that soap skin and bubble creates. All right. And then finally, this isn't necessarily a tool that helps you fix the openings as much as it helps you find them. And this is kind of a big example, but I've used this for much smaller geometry. So there's an extension called Solid Inspector that you can download from the SketchUp extension warehouse. And so what this will do is it'll highlight locations where there are holes in your model. Then you can come in here and you can fix them manually. And in the case of these faces, it's pretty easy because this face is just made up of triangulated surfaces, which you can see if you toggle on your hidden geometry. But you can use Solid inspector in order to find the holes that you need to patch before you need to start patching them like this. So it is a very valuable tool for finding issues in your model if you do need to patch them. All right, so that's an overview of a bunch of different ways to patch things in your model. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Is there anything I forgot? Are there any tricks that you're using to patch openings? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to learn more about how to use SketchUp, I will link to my course on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.